Let's take a look at a traditional roadwork beacon from the past. It uses a tungsten lamp and a big square 6 volt battery. Now, I found this when I was back in Glasgow because I bought this from an electrical distributor a while ago. It might even have been Arco. Arco is an industrial supplier. They sell things like boots and big yellow jackets and huge orange rubber bib overalls and things like that. And amongst that stuff, they also sell the sort of like the traffic uh, sort of beacon lights and this was a long time ago it is tungsten uh, the battery was dead this is the type of battery it takes it's a six volt battery a huge big lantern battery with a positive spring and then a negative spring in the middle and inside that square uh, package are four very big cells these were cheap because they were kind of considered disposable they're cheaply made and um they do have the little hook here I'm not sure if this is designed more when this is physically clipped on. I've not clipped it on because it's very hard to get back off. I don't know if this is so much to hold it on or if it's for holding it when you're moving it about or if it's to actually hook it over a cone. It might be to hook it over a cone. It also has this threaded uh, screw here that can go into a hole in the side. But anyway, I have it currently running off 6 volts. Uh, we'll open it up in a moment. We'll take a look at the circuit board. Uh, I shall turn the light off so you can see it going. At this point, I have to warn you that there's going to be, obviously, significant flashing. So this is your warning in advance, and I'll tell you when the flashing has stopped. Let's take a look at that now. So here it is, and I have to say, I thought it would just pulse briefly, but it is actually almost like a 50-50 on-off ratio, and the current draw is significant. It averages out round about 50 milliamps. And this is no light sensor. Anyway, uh, the light is about to come back. Watch your eyes. Also, the flashing is about to end right now. The light is back and the flashing has stopped. Well, it's still flashing inside. It's just not very bright. So this thing physically unclips. And it's worth mentioning to turn it on and off, you actually rotate this top. And all it does is it slides these contacts on the battery. Now, I've got some wires tacked to this, so it doesn't really matter that much. Uh, let's pull the circuit board out, because it does come out. So it's kind of friction fit. Well, that's a wire just come off. Uh, this is actually in quite tight. And, uh, there we go. Let me just hold that wire on again, so you can see the pretty, pretty little tongues and light just going on and off inside. And look, the circuit board is literally... This is so cheaply made, it's just brass strips. The circuit board dangling here and the actual wire connecting the side of the lamp is just stuffed down the side of the lamp holder. Uh, right, tell you what, I shall turn the power off to this now because it does not need it anymore. And we'll explore the connection system and then I'll reverse engineer the circuit board. Putting a dead battery in my luggage when I came back here was not in the cards. It was going to make be too messy. This is quite chunky like this, it's very dalek -y. And it says Microlight by GSP. Okay. So the construction. There are three brass strips. One of them is going on to the outer positive connection here, which they've connected with a black wire for some reason. And as you rotate it around uh, the top, it literally just slides over the spring of the battery. That was the switching mechanism. The sender contact doesn't actually connect to the back of the lamp. It is separate. It's looped through and then up, and then they've soldered the, the connection on for the negative. But the connection for the lamp itself is actually going to the positive. And that one strip, they've fed it through here, and somehow they've actually managed to feed it up through this hole here. Let me zoom down this. They've fed it up through from here, through, up through this hole here and then underneath this lamp cap. Uh, that's actually not going to be very easy to do unless they fed it from this end and then tucked it down, dragged it through, which wouldn't be that easy, and then uh, folded it over. Um, and that is the connection to the back of the lamp. It means that if this was pushed in too hard, it could theoretically short out. That's a bit of a delicate balance, isn't it? This little ramp here is to let the battery contact slide up and down as you rotate it round to turn it on and off. Here is the circuit board, right? Tell you what, you know what we do now? Oh, tell you what, I'll take the lamp out, right? So the lamp is basically, is it a bayonet cap fit? Is it going to bayonet? It is bayonet cap. So it's got a little spring down there. 
going on to the bottom contact that touches the back contact here. And it does have this sort of bait capping thing, but the connection to the outside here, the switch negative is this case, is actually just basically just a wire stuffed over the edge. And the lamp, it says, is 5 volt 0 0.09 amp. That makes sense for the fact it was averaging about 50-ish milliamps uh, on its sort of what appeared like a 50-50 duty cycle. Here is the two transistor circuit. Right, OK. I shall reverse engineer this. This should be the most interesting bit. One moment, please. Reverse engineering is complete. Let's explore. And this is not a shining example of good design. Let's uh, zoom in it because it's a very minimalist design. There is a little connector here. I wonder if that was a light sensor. I experimentally put a resistor across it with a high value and a medium value. It was not. It didn't end well. So no, uh, I'm not sure what that's for that connector. Uh, there is a slight error on here. I drew this resistor one position across. It's actually between these two pads. So we've got a PNP transistor and an NPN transistor, and we've got two fairly high value resistors, 240K and uh, 1.5 meg ohm. We've got a very low value, 0.47 meg fired capacitor, rated 50 volts, and that is basically it. So this is a single sided board. So what you're seeing here is what you get if you want to try and reverse engineer it yourself but i've got the schematic here so you can see what it's like i'll try and explain what's happening here but there's so much happening at once that it's one of these very wibbly wobbly minimalist analog circuits uh, first thing i'd do to improve this is put a resistor here because there is no significant current limiting into the base here so it relies on this transistor just being turned on gently just to feed current to this one it's not great. When you power it up initially, the lamp lights instantly. That's interesting. Um, so here is what I think is happening here. Now, this is a PNP transistor, BC558. And that means the base has to be pulled negative to actually turn this transistor on. This is an NPN transistor, BC548. And the base has to go positive to turn this one on. So this one is effectively turning this transistor on, but without a base resistor. When it does that, it turns the lamp on, but it also pulls the negative of this capacitor down. And then that, uh, because this is pulled negative, it makes sure that transistor turns on solidly and current starts flowing, not just through the transistor to the base of the other transistor, but also to the base of this transistor. And it effectively starts charging that capacitor up. Once it's reached a point that it's the current going to that means the voltage is actually getting a wee bit close to the uh, plus six volt rail. Um, it starts gradually turning this transistor off. At the slightest hint of that turning off, it then has the avalanche effect of turning this transistor off. And that then means that the lamp here suddenly pulls the uh, side of this capacitor that was originally negative is suddenly pulled up to the positive via the lamp. And effectively, then that capacitor holds that transistor off as it sort of discharges. Is it discharging here? I think it is. But at some point, it's going to reach uh, the threshold point that the this resistor here will probably provide a slight bias to this transistor. And uh, it will start turning on as soon as it starts. The slightest hint of turning on turns the other one on and it suddenly it pulls the end of that capacitor back down to the negative rail and that drives that transistor on solidly for the next timing cycle and that's it it's basically charging and discharging this capacitor and that's toggling the whole circuit on and off it is very minimalist it's too minimalist to be honest but having said that it's all about saving components but you think it's not going to save that much is it really it's like a couple of resistors here and there it's not it's not good. I think someone's just been clever trying to economise it to the hilt. I do wonder about that connector here because I don't know. It says LD1. That to me means light detector or LDR, light dependent resistor. But it effectively is across that capacitor and it may have just stopped it charging. But when I put a resistor across there, um, all it did was it jammed the circuit on and then a lot of current flowed through the uh, transistors into the base of that transistor, like much more than was flowing through the lamp. It was a bit serious. But um, there we go. That's it. It's uh, 
the minimalist circuit to just that very simple flashing beacon where they've just cut the circuitry right down to the absolute bare minimum. Very interesting in its own right, but not, uh, I think I prefer the approach of, uh, well, modern ones with the LEDs and the light sensor and everything. This was maybe just going too far because it meant that in the morning when someone came in, they had to turn all those lights off manually. And also uh, at the weekend, if nobody was there to do that, that kept drawing about 50 milliamps all day long uh, in daylight. But there we have it, the British Roadwork Type Beacon.